Every single honest gold prospector deserves some respect. Finding gold is difficult all over the planet and even the tiniest flake cannot be found by lazing around. Thank you so much guys for your comments about the white Rabusa video. They're highly appreciated. So I thought why not pick you up here at right at this spot where the Rabusa video ended. So let's go, let's talk about some gold prospecting. Do you also know that kind of gold prospector who always seems to find more gold, no matter where and when? A kind of f***ing Gladstone gander? <laughs> I'm sure you do. Well, I tried to crack their secrets and, um, you know, surprisingly cracking it was quite easy, but implementing was not. So, one thing I can tell you right now, there's really not that much luck involved. Jack Richer said, I don't believe in coincidence. So back then when I started with gold prospecting more than 15 years ago, I, I wanted to, to find out what this kind of uh, super successful gold prospector types, what they do differently. And uh, well, I met quite a few of them over the years in different countries and, and surprisingly with, with quite different methods. So next I tried to um, to isolate what remains, what they all have in common. And again, surprisingly, I found out the secret doesn't lie within uh, what we would call technical prospecting knowledge. It's rather kind of the way they are doing things. You heard that guy? Well, that's a coincidence. When I was coming down, he went up and started playing this awesome instrument. This video is not about um, stuff like inner sides of river bands, like bedrock crevices or uh, uh, layer changes in the gravel and, and so on. And it's also not about um, crevicing techniques or how and where to set a sluice box or uh, tuning a metal detector and so. Don't get me wrong. That's very important stuff, in fact, because it's kind of the, the basics. Uh, you hear, he started again. Oh, it's awesome. So it's kind of the basics. It's the, it's the apprenticeship, you know, but that's no secret. There are tons of, of excellent books and, and YouTube tutorials out there, so you can learn that stuff. But one thing remains, you, we have to know when we, when we finished apprenticeship, most of us are still far from being a master. How cool is that? I'm talking about there are no coincidences and no luck and here you go. <laughs> well, these this secrets, let's, let's call them gold prospector wisdoms. They lie more within the kind of the, the way you do things, kind of attitudes, kind of, kind of mindsets and um, uh, how to get things done, how to tackle problems and so on. And you know, the real beauty of it is the gold prospector wisdoms, they are not only true for gold prospecting, they are true for many things in life.
it's not about magic. Believing in fairy tales doesn't make us find any more gold. You know, true wisdoms are often kind of obvious, but it's uh, rather difficult to implement them. And, but that's the real deal, I know. If you really want to be a long time, very successful gold prospector, you have to I'm sorry about this one. My wife hates this standby song. The discussion of gold prospector wisdoms doesn't start now. In fact, we already plunged deeply into the topic. And finally, during all my talking, I was not prospecting. Gold prospector wisdoms are not about talking, they are about doing. That's something I especially like in gold prospecting. The gold doesn't care about our smart ass talking. It's just not found by talking. So, gold prospecting somehow separates the talkers from the doers. But now back to the script. So the first thing I observed which all super successful prospectors have is they love the process of searching like bloodhounds. I guess all of us love it to find gold. Most of us also love it to mine a good spot. It's hard work, but it's very satisfying. But only a very few of us truly love it to search the good spot. I mean, you start with not having a good spot and without any guarantee at all of finding one. You will invest a lot of time in failures and overburden and it can be really, really difficult and exhausting. But I think the unavoidable failures are the hardest point. Only very few of us like these kind of tasks, at least not at the beginning. There may be three categories. A very, very few love it from day one. They are really born for it, but they are rare. The second category, which I am in, have to learn to love it over the years, through success and just by maturing. Then there is a third category. They'll never love it. Maybe they should do something else. Life is too short to waste it for things we are not made for. If we have the choice, of course. We are in fact privileged if we have a choice. So if we really want to excel in something, the best source of motivation is the love for doing it. And at the end of the day, if you love the process of searching for gold, you always win, no matter if you find some. 